So, we are now in Cold War 2.0, or Cold War 2, unfortunately. Now, this video, like all my videos, is filmed in advance, so by the time you see this video, um, this will be sort of old news, but... So, the UN has now said we are actually in a second Cold War. Uh, some people say did the first Cold War ever really end, but... For quite a long time, uh, relations with Russia were okay, better than they were during times of the Soviet Union. And, um... Of course, now we are um, back at the stage where everybody's got the gun to each other's heads. So, obviously, most of this has been over Syria. Uh, and, obviously, I want to make it clear from the get-go that I don't have a problem with Russian people or anything like that. Because I think a lot of this is sort of politicians throwing shit at each other. And then, obviously, it's the regular people that suffer, as always. So, you know, as I said, I don't have a problem with uh, the average Russian. But... Obviously, I think a lot of this stuff started with Ukraine. Uh, lots of the Western countries tried to destabilise parts of Ukraine to make them more pro-EU. Uh, Russia stepped in and said, no, Ukraine is our buffer state. And then, obviously, that resulted in the taking of Crimea and the sort of civil war that's been going on non-stop there for ages. There's obviously been all this trouble in Syria as well, where um, lots of the sort of Western-backed terrorists and everything tried to overthrow Assad. There may have been people there with a legitimate interest in it uh, that weren't Western-funded. But again, <clears throat> Russia eventually stepped into that. So now after an alleged chemical attack, it, uh, we are now pointing the fingers at Russia and Assad in the West. And Theresa May in the UK has taken illegal action by bombing um, Syria, or cruise missile striking Syria, however they did it because she did not consult Parliament, and she did not wait for the UN to get back to her, so as far as I see it, she's committed a war crime. Because you can't just randomly say, I'm going to bomb a country without declaring war on them. In my opinion, that is a war crime. But again, I'm probably more rational about these things than a lot of the politicians are, who are all corrupt, as we know. So, what does this mean for everybody, I guess? Because, obviously, I find the Cold War in history pretty fascinating, but I didn't live through any of it. So, the important thing to realise for the people who didn't live through the Cold War is, for lots of it, there was this fear that there might not be a tomorrow, that the nuclear button would be pressed and everybody would destroy everybody else. It would be the end of the world, in a sense. I'm sure lots of isopods and things like that might have survived it, but people in general would have been wiped out. The people who weren't directly bombed may be wiped out by fallout or the actual um, sort of nuclear winter. The idea of a nuclear winter is all the dust and crap that's thrown up when the nukes go off is sent into the atmosphere, which then blocks lots of the sunlight going through, making the Earth go very cold. It's basically a permanent winter for many decades, and that would lead to very little crop growth and things like that, which means the majority of survivors would then starve to death. If you haven't seen it, watch Fred's. I always recommend it. It was an old, I think, produced by the BBC back when the BBC was still good, um, film about sort of the realities, it was kind of like a docudrama of what would happen in the event of a nuclear war and it follows a couple of people in England where sort of everything's wiped out and then as they all slowly succumb to sort of radiation poisoning and sort of how horrible the new world is, the lucky ones basically die under the bomb in Fred's. So it's interesting that we're now moving back into a period where all those gas masks and things like that I have are now becoming more relevant again, the sort of spectre of nuclear war and chemical and biological warfare are probably going to become more apparent again. So there's nothing I can do in a, basically a call for reason because none of the politicians would ever listen to it. But I do hope with this video at least that people who are on the other side realise that average people like me have no problem with you. It's all our government's fault as far as I see it. Um, but yeah. We will be moving into interesting times. For those of you who are interested, I have done videos before regarding nuclear war and the very little survival chances you'd have, but people who are interested in that might want to watch those videos. Again, I've noticed more people are now watching the gas mask videos than usual, I guess, because people are worrying that they might actually need one. When I had reasons for thinking, because, you know, I collect most of these masks, I don't actually have them for practical purposes, only a few I've got set up ready with spare filters and everything else for practical reasons. I gen would generally see terrorism and um, sort of accidental gas leaks and things like that, the reason you'd want a mask, not actual um, fully state-sponsored nuclear warfare, but we'll have to see now, won't we? So, as I said, this video isn't really a call to reason, because nobody with, you know, the power would 
watch a video like this and learn to reason. But stay safe everybody, um, and we will follow this and see what happens. As I said I try not to get too political on this channel, but you know the politicians really do annoy me at stages where you know I, I think they really are traitors to the countries they're elected into, if they even are elected, because Theresa May wasn't, was she? Um, she was never elected as Prime Minister, she just became it because Cameron stepped down after he'd done his job screwing the country. So anyway, there we go. Uh, we are now in Cold War 2.0. Uh, we will have to watch and see how this develops, but not really good news for anybody.